Hello and welcome to Council Recap, where we take the content of the City Council meetings and give you the breakdown. I'm Kayla Moeller. There were a few presentations this week. First, Council honored the life of Elizabeth Mosley. Mrs. Mosley graduated from San Diego State University in 1972 before becoming Education Bureau Chief of the Los Angeles South Branch case for the state of California. She moved to Hawthorne in 1978 and became a loving mother of four children and was involved with the Hawthorne Miracle Workers. The city recognizes her personal achievements as well as her contributions to the community. Next, City Attorney Robert Kim gave a presentation on Proposition 64 as related to cannabis in the city. He went over the departments, the types of licenses, product packaging, and record keeping. He also gave insight on potential next steps in council directives. In the resolution portion of the meeting, Resolution 8340 was passed to re-ratify the proclamation of a state of emergency by Governor Newsom and reauthorizing remote teleconference meetings of the City Council, Commissions and Committees for another 30-day period beginning March 8, 2022 and ending April 7, 2022. Next, Resolution 8341 was approved to designate the City Council's current selection of primary and alternative delegates to represent the City on various organizations for 2022. In the public hearing portion of the meeting, Council voted to approve Resolutions 8342, 8343, and 8344. These resolutions were needed in order for the City to be in compliance with the state's housing element law. Perry Banner, the city's planning consultant, gave a presentation on the structure of the 2021 through 2029 housing element. He went over fair housing, RENA allocation, downtown Hawthorne specific plan mixed use districts, and opportunity sites. In the ordinances portion, Ordinance 2230 was introduced to amend stormwater and urban runoff pollution control under the health and safety section of the Hawthorne Municipal Code. These amendments will expand the existing stormwater management and discharge control requirements. Next, in the general matters portion, Council received and filed a report on the short-term rental program that was adopted two years ago. Due to the pandemic, demand for STRs severely dropped. Travel and hospitality sectors lag behind in their recovery, and therefore no meaningful data on the city's program is available at this time and won't be for another two years. Next, Council discussed outdoor dining in the city. Director of Public Works, Alan Leung, gave a presentation on what outdoor dining would look like. For example, using K-rails or building ADA-compliant shelter to protect diners from the road. He also went over potential building expenses for the city and business owners, as well as the history of ordinances of outdoor dining in relation to COVID-19. Then Council received and filed a report regarding landlord-tenant issues. Alana Eden, the Director of Media Outreach and Education of the Housing Rights Center, gave a presentation on the HRC's services and LA County COVID-19 tenant protections. Then Council received and filed the Mid-Year Financial Report for Fiscal Year 2021-2022. Felice Lopez, the City's Finance Director, presented a general fund review for the Council. The City Manager's Consent Calendar had a few items this week. First, Council approved an agreement between the City and John L. Hunter & Associates for consulting services for stormwater and sewer-related inspection services. To ensure continuity of the City's existing programs and its continued compliance with current and upcoming regulations, the Director of Public Works will execute the agreement. Then, Council authorized the City Manager to sign amended contracts with HDL Econ Solutions for administering the COVID-19 Relief and Economic Recovery Program. The local recovery program needs to be carefully and thoughtfully administered to ensure optimum use of the funds in alignment with the City Council's goals and in compliance with ARPA requirements. The amendments to the contract will add an additional $80,000 in funding for ARPA services to be provided by HDL. Next, Council approved the Improvement and Maintenance Cooperation Agreement with the City of El Segundo. The agreement is to construct improvements on the Union Pacific Railroad crossing on Aviation Boulevard between El Segundo Boulevard and 135th Street. The work includes replacement of track, the full width of the crossing, installing new concrete pads, and construction of sidewalks and ADA ramps. 
Then Council received and filed the City's investment report for the quarter that ended December 31, 2021. Next, Council gave direction regarding the allocation of $150,000 to nonprofit organizations in the City. Council directed staff to compile a more accurate list of nonprofit organizations in Hawthorne and make a final decision at a future meeting. In the City Attorney's consent calendar, one claim was approved. In the discussion action items, Council held a study session on potentially becoming a charter city. Council reviewed the report and supporting information, discussed the content to be included in a draft charter, and directed staff to proceed with preparing a draft charter. Well, that's it for the meeting this week. Thank you for joining us for Council Recap. Remember, you can always watch City Council meetings in their entirety by going to www.youtube.com and searching for Hawthorne Community Television. Stay safe and healthy, and we'll see you next time.